Hi everyone, I hope you're having a great week. I am here to do the Civil War tag, which is created by Alan over at Big Hard Books and Classics, and I was tagged by Vin over at Revenant Reads. So we'll go ahead straight in with the prompts. The first one is, what is your favorite Civil War novel? So um, I don't tend to read a lot of fiction in relation to the Civil War, um, but one that I did read recently, and this seems to be a favorite uh, of a lot of people that I have seen do this tag, um, is Stephen Crane's The Red Badge of Courage. And if you're not familiar, it's about a young man who feels like he has to prove himself um, to himself and to others. And the only way that he can do that and earn honor um, and glory is by going off to war and returning wounded um, so he can say that he fought bravely and courageously. Um, it seemed less about, you know, choosing sides or fight, fighting for a cause but more about that honor and glory and as he quickly finds out um war is horrifying terrifying and and gruesome and um you know it's not as rosy as he pictured um but yeah one of the books that i do plan on reading and this isn't a part of the prompt but i'm gonna throw it in anyways um the one that i want to read uh probably in january is actually in alternative history and it is Ward Moore's uh, Bring the Jubilee. Um, and this is basically a book about what would have happened. Uh, it, it's a look at what would have happened if the South had actually won the Civil War. So I'm quite uh, keen on reading that. It, it almost feels a bit, or it sounds a bit like Philip Dick's The Man in the High Castle, um, which is what would have happened if the Axis powers had won and partitioned America. Um, but yeah, it very much gave me um, Man in the High Castle vibes, so I do really want to read that. But anyways, moving on to the next prompt. Um, number two, what is your favorite Civil War nonfiction? Um, so if you know me, uh, my wheelhouse is very much prehistory and medieval history. I don't tend to read a lot of nonfiction um, that is more recent. However, I do occasionally like to read the odd biography on um, Civil War um, figures. And one of the ones that I read recently was a biography on Abraham Lincoln called Rise to Greatness. And I should have come more prepared, but the author's name, I believe, is David Von Drail. Um, and this is just a look at Abraham's um, just a couple of years while he was in office, just before he came to office. And then I think just shortly before um, Gettysburg. And what I liked about this, while it's well known that Abraham Lincoln was prone to depression. There was a lot of tragedy in his life with his, you know, his sons passing away, um, one before he came into office, one who passed away while he was in office. Um, you know, the, the relationship that he had with Mary Todd Lincoln, um, all of these factors, it almost seemed like, and, and the fact that he, you know, he's a country bumpkin lawyer um, from the Midwest. So, you know, it almost seemed like he had absolutely no business uniting the country and um, being the leader that he was. Um, so it's, it's really a look at all of these factors and his psyche um, and just the, the, crap that he had to deal with while he was in office it almost seemed like McClellan McClellan was at you know actively trying to prevent the union from succeeding <laughs> um you know just all of these things that he had to deal with on top of all of the personal stuff that he was going through um but what you know the 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 unifying um characteristics of his personality that actually um made him such a brilliant leader and um able to not always not necessarily um just compromise um but look for solutions um so i really did enjoy this book for that reason um so yes moving on to the next prompt um what state do you live in so i don't live in the states anymore um i am based in the uk however i am from the state of maryland which um i mean in terms of civil war history maryland was in the thick of it um I think the perception of Maryland um, that is held by both Marylanders and non-Marylanders today is very different 
of what it was in the past or very recently in the past actually and and the perception that i'm talking about is whether or not maryland is a southern state or if it's a northern state a lot of marylanders today will say that it's a mid-atlantic state and i think neo locality has a lot to do with this a lot of people move into the state um, for um, you know a particular set of jobs particularly around the washington dc area um, but it wasn't until very recently that this idea has formed. Um, Maryland historically was viewed as a southern state. Marylanders view that, viewed themselves culturally as southerners. You know, we're below the Mason-Dixon line. That is the, the divide between the north and south. But, um, you know, even more than that, I think a lot of people in Maryland forget that Maryland was a slaveholding state. Um, I mean, let's not forget that Frederick Douglass and Harriet Tubman were both from Maryland um, and had to flee slavery from, you know, in Maryland. So this idea that um, Maryland is not a southern state is very different from um, the idea that people held in the past. Um, and I just wanted to bring that up because, um, you know, it, Maryland during the Civil War, um, there, it was such a divided opinion because of its unique position between the North and South. There were a lot of people who were, um, you know, sympathetic to the Union, and there were a lot of people who were very, very sympathetic to the the Southern cause. Um, so, you know, um, where I am from in Maryland, it is five minutes from the Virginia border, um, and the town that I'm from, the cemetery that's there, you can see headstones of men um, who had fought on the Union side and men who had fought on the Confederate side, and they're relatives, so it was very much a war between brothers, a war between neighbors, a, a war between cousins, and it was you know, the pain and suffering that the war had caused there, you know, is just so apparent um, where I'm from and it's written on the headstones. Um, but, you know, in terms of what you can see in Maryland these days, um, just if you wanted to do, you know, a, a Civil War tour, I, I mean, I had such a you know, my parents were very encouraging of, you know, us learning history and they always took us to Gettysburg every summer. I live very close to Harper's Ferry, um, Antietam, the Battle of Monocacy. Um, I live very close to Frederick, which was occupied by both the Union and Confederates um, at different points. So um, yeah, just a, a great place to, to grow up if, if you're very interested in um, Civil War history. But anyways, I'll move on to the next prompt. Um, did you ever own a Confederate or Rebel flag? Um, no, no one in my family has. Um, no one in my family does. Um, there were some houses in my um, area that definitely did um, fly the Confederate flag, as I mentioned, it, you know, the, unfortunately, I think unfortunately, um, it's, you know, because of our unique position, um, but, you know, between the North and South, uh, there are still some sympathetic, um, you know, people who view the Confederate flag as a symbol, uh, you know, they try to glorify it. Um, but yeah, anyways, I just, I don't, I don't like what it stands for. Um, and I will never own one. Um, number five, how do you feel about Confederate state memorabilia? And I think this is in relation to statues. Um, I don't think they deserve any place in um, public spaces. I do think that they need to be removed. Um, while I do appreciate that they are part of a particular place's history, um, the, you know, the, the definition of a statue, the, the whole purpose of a statue is to glorify or memorialize a figure and if we keep these statues of confederate soldiers in public spaces then the what we're saying is that um you know we are glorifying or um honoring what they have done and i don't think those ideas have any place in a progressive society um so yeah I don't think that they should be destroyed. Again, I am an archeologist and I think objects are very important tools for learning history. Um, I do think that it would be much better if they were moved to m museums where, um, that, where they teach um, people about the Civil War and very recent history um, and you know where there's that particular narrative of um, uh, 
unfortunately, just how how long it's taken or is taking to really um, get over the Civil War. Um, it's, but yeah. Anyways, I'll move on to the next question before I babble on. Um, how do you feel about the renaming of ships and military bases uh, named after Confederate generals? Again, um, these places are named after Confederate generals or were to glorify or honor them. Um, and I do believe that it would be much better if they were renamed. Um, I don't think that um, history should be rewritten. I don't think that um, by renaming these places that we are forgetting history. Again, I think it's very important to keep in mind where we come from and how we got here. But I think by keeping um, the names as they are, um, we're sending a very clear message, um, particularly to the black community that, um, you know, it, it just, it doesn't make sense if, as I say, for living in a progressive society, if um, we, we keep those names. Some people might have very differing opinions from me, um, and I would be very interested in hearing your opinions. Um, uh, you know, if you wanna have a very polite discussion in the comments uh, section uh, down below, we can have a very respectful uh, discussion, uh, but I'd be very interested in hearing what you all have to say. Um, so I do encourage you to do this tag. And if you're not from the United States of America, I think some of these questions, um, while they are very U US specific, I think you can tailor them to your own country if you want to share your thoughts and opinions about a civil war that has happened in your own country. So I encourage anyone to do this tag. Um, but anyways, these are the answers to the Civil War tag. Um, thank you, Alan, for creating this, and thank you, Vin, for tagging me. Um, but until next time, BookTube, bye.